you. Settle down. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh, it's the holidays. Uh, I guess you know by now this guy, this man, the uh, mafia chieftain, Paul Castellano, gunned down in front of a restaurant the other night. Sparks Steakhouse? Yeah. yeah. I like to mention that as much as I can because... <laughs> I know those people really enjoy this kind of publicity. It's, it's this kind of positive word of mouth that puts people in the seats, you know. So it was, uh, it was Sparks Steakhouse on 46th, I believe, right here in uh, Midtown. And, uh, but ever since then, the, the city has been in uh, turmoil over this. And uh, as a matter of fact, the governor of the state of New York uh, got very disgusted. And yesterday, in a public statement, he said, and this is the truth, he actually said, Mario Cuomo said, there is no mafia. <laughs> I, no. I just hate to hear that kind of thing, you know, especially at Christmas, because I think it really disillusions the kiddies, you know? It's, a, uh, it's, it's too darn bad that he has to go and spoil the... Uh, uh, and last night on the news, they had uh, videotape footage. They had a wake for uh, Paul Castellano. And I, I must admit, it was kind of touching. You got to see uh, Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano uh, embracing uh, Root Canal. Uh, oh, I screwed this up now. Okay, so this would have been a terrific joke, too. Let me just start all over. We'll edit this out. It'll be great. But last night on the, uh, the news, you get to see footage of the uh, Paul Castellano wake, and all of his friends were gathering to pay their final respects. And I must admit, it was kind of touching. You get to see Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano hugging Johnny Root Canal Gambelli. You know, I almost cried. It was... <laughs> Sparks Steakhouse, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh... Where is it, Paul? Between uh, first and second? I don't know. Where Sparks. Right. Sparks Steakhouse? 46 between first and second. What? Second and third, a voice from the back. Yeah, we're all dead meat. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do that one, Kevin. I think it would break this magic mood we've created. Here. Uh, here he is, folks. You know him, you love him. You can't live without him. It's our old friend, Paul Schaefer. Paul. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. No. Well, I have a... Mm -hmm. I do have, I, mm -hmm. I did come up with a sort of a warm Christmas anecdote. Do you have a warm Christmas? Yes. Now, this is a personal anecdote from your boyhood. Yes. Uh, your, your, uh, your ancestral home in Thunder Bay. Well, actually, uh, just last year, actually, this happened. All right, this will be good. Personal, though. Personal. You well, and your you, family. You know how much the Phil Spector Christmas album means to me. It's the more, only thing More than that, life itself. It's the only thing that gets me through Christmas. Right. Getting to listen to the Ronettes and the yeah. Crystals and the Darling Love Sing, uh -huh. all the rock versions of the Christmas tunes. Last year... I could not get a hold of one. No matter where I looked, all stores were sold out because Spectre re-releases it every year and makes a killing every year uh -huh. on something that he released in 63. Could but we anyway, have some music with this, though? I think a little music would be nice. A little bass, a little bass solo on. Yeah, that's... So a... anyway... I could not find any... I went to every record store, couldn't find a copy of the Phil Spector Christmas album. But two days before Christmas, luckily for me, a promotional copy of the album arrived in the mail for oh. free. And it had a, you know, a, a hole punched in the corner so you can't resell it. Yeah, that's great. And it was a, like a, a weird stereo remix of it anyway with all the echo on one side. But still, it was a very warm feeling. Thank you very much. Warm, warm thing for me. And everything turned out okay. Thank you. It's a little something we like to call Christmas with the Schaefers. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, Steve Jordan gave us uh, uh, gave me this wonderful gift last night. I don't know if this will work. It's just some kind of a metal deal here, but... Oh, now it's broken. Oh, there it is. There it is. Can you hear that? Isn't that amazing? Can you hear this or not? Yes. Isn't it amazing? Yes. Thank you. Apparently, it's not all that damn amazing. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. It's like magic in there. Well, yeah. that, yeah, that in itself. But see, you shake it, and it's like uh, you're in a, another dimension. Yeah. That's oh. the dimension that Steve lives in most of the time. Oh, just... <laughs> now, can you hear this? Okay, well, I don't know. There's some kind of, it's magic, right, Steve? It is magic. It is magic. What are we doing? We got a great commercial. <laughs> He says it's black magic. We have to do this. Here's a word from the King of Beers, Budweiser, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. Remember, this Bud's for you. What? Not yet? Not yet? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, paperwork, though, I think. 
By the way, here's the, the notice that they're putting up in the buildings and elevators and shops and on car windows around uh, Sparks uh, uh, Steakhouse. If you, if you witnessed this thing on Monday, they would like you to come forward and end your life. Okay, so what are we doing? It's a big night. It's our final show before the holidays. I know we're wasting a lot of time. We've got to get right to it, but uh, we got a great show. Uh, James Woods is here, Jimmy Alec, Kathleen Turner, and uh, uh, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, it's viewer night to mail. <laughs> See, that beechwood aging, yes, that clean, crisp taste, remember. Not th no, not yet. <laughs> Letter number one begins, Your Highness, there is a man in my neighborhood who looks like Ted Koppel. What should I do? <laughs> Scared silly, Frank Lapino, Wilton, Connecticut. Frank, listen to me, please. Please do not be frightened. This time of year, you know, you're going to see many people who do look just exactly like Ted Koppel. Now, you'll see them on street corners, you're going to see them in shopping malls, and yes, even in department stores. They, these men are actually Ted Koppel's helpers. But believe me... <laughs> There is only one real Ted Koppel. And if you're very, very good, I'm sure he won't forget you on Christmas morning. See, this is free. You don't have to pay for this. This is extra entertainment. Nowhere, nowhere on tonight's rundown or in TV Guide will you find this little item listed. You get it free as a bonus. It's a viewer bonus. It's for the holidays. Dear Dave, let's not beat around the bush here, Dave. Just how much do you hate mimes? <laughs> Jeff Butcher, Wilmington, Ohio. How much do I hate mimes? <laughs> Did I look like a jerk, Paul? Doing that mime? Yeah. No, it looked very well on you, actually. Thank you. You studied with Jacques Lecoq, didn't you, in, uh... In Paris? I swear. That's a real guy. Yeah, um... Letter number three. Dear Dave, after much deliberation, we have decided to dub you the all-being master of time, space, and dimension. Has anything like this ever happened to you before in awe? Uh, Jim Cott, Ron Swarner, Andy Face. It took three guys to write this letter. Uh, from Kirkland, Washington. P.S. Please keep this document as proof of your title. Well, that's very kind of you, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jim, Ron, and Andy. And I'll certainly treasure this. And uh, I'd like to send you boys a little something. Uh, we have it right here. It's a, it's a scroll. And uh, I want you guys to keep this as a proof of, of your title. See what it says there? Jim Cott, Ron Swarner, Andy Face. Three guys with too much free time. So... You know, Paul, I heard another rumor about Connie Chung. Oh, no. Yep, I heard that she's not only, is she not, she's leaving NBC, but she's going to CBS. Oh, no. Yep, she's going to be on Knott's Landing. <laughs> That's what I heard. Oh, God, I just pray it's only a rumor. Uh, letter number four, Dear Dave, I often receive telepathic messages from that beautiful blonde hairdresser standing just off stage. I think she wants to have a beer with me. Can you help Dave Donovan, West Peoria, Illinois? <clears throat> uh, Dave, I think you're referring to Candy Carell, our uh, lovely makeup artist. Now, let's see. Uh, there's Candy. Hi, Candy. Let's, let's try and see what she's thinking. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Apparently, she is thinking about having a beer, and uh, maybe she's thinking about having it with, uh, would it be Dave Donovan? Let's just see who... Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No. She's thinking about having a beer with Ray Donovan, the former Secretary of Labor indicted last year for defrauding the city on a subway construction project. He's still awaiting trial, and believe me, he's eminently eligible. So there you are. That's... Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, no, don't, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this will be our last uh, viewer mail letter uh, for uh, tonight, and uh, traditionally the final letter is what, Paul? Traditionally, uh, the final letter. You weren't, you, <laughs> you weren't paying attention. It's traditionally the funniest letter. There you go. So this one is going to get something to dab the tears of laughter away from your eyes. 
<laughs> Letter number five begins, uh, Dear Doc. <laughs> that's to me. No, 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 that's me. They're, they're referring to the character I used to play on Gunsmoke. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, Dear Doc, this coming spring I will be having several guests come to my town to visit me from back east. Now, I promise to bake them each a blueberry pie, but my blueberry plants will only yield enough berries for four pies. And there will be seven people. What should I do, Doc? Love, Granny Beale, Petaluma, California. Well, Granny, since your letter is of a technical nature, we're going to have to turn it over to our own Jimmy Fitzgerald in Technician's Corner. Jimmy? It's Jimmy Fitzgerald right here. In the problem is simple. You have seven friends, but only four pies. Here's what I did in a similar situation a couple of years back. George, how are you? Come on in, you look cold. Oh, yes. I had that pie for you, just as I promised. <laughs> oh my, what an unfortunate accident. What's that? You've lost your appetite? Well, you won't be needing this then. <laughs> See, all you need is a string, a two by four, some 12 inch nails, and the element of surprise. And if you get carried away like I did two years ago, you'll have a few pies left over for yourself. Well. Happy holidays and good eating. Okay, let me do it again. <clears throat> Here, ladies and gentlemen, is a word from the king of beers, Budweiser. It's beechwood aged for that clean beechwood. It can't possibly make a difference, can it? Beechwood? <laughs> Budweiser, remember it's plywood aged. For that clean, crisp taste, remember this Bud's for you.